LGBT history through these amazing, incredible leaders. And so very much honored to have Cleve Jones with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you for showing up tonight. It's cold. I appreciate you sticking around here. I've marched with many of you over the decades. And uh, today, I'm just remembering that day. I was on Castro Street on November 27th, 1978. I was picketing the Patio Cafe with Local 2. And the 23rd <laughs> bus pulled up, and a woman yelled at me out the window, Cleve, they shot the mayor. I thought to myself, who would shoot Mayor Moscone? And I grabbed a taxi, and I got to City Hall. I entered on the Van Ness side. I ran up the stairs that Harvey always told me to walk up and never take the elevator. I went looking for him. I had the key to the hallway that connects the supervisor's chambers to the supervisor's offices. And I remember turning the corner and unlocking the door and walking down that hallway and seeing Harvey's feet sticking out of Dan White's office. And I knew it was Harvey because he only had one pair of dress shoes, a pair of secondhand wingtips that he got at a thrift shop. I was 24 years old, I'd never seen a dead person before. And the first thing that went through my mind was, it's over. It's all over. We were stuck there while they bundled up the bodies. And we found the audio cassette that he'd left because he predicted his assassination. And I used to tease him and tell him he wasn't important enough to get shot. Who do you think you are, Dr. King, Malcolm X? They're not gonna kill you. And we listened to his voice telling us what we had to do while his body still lay in the hallway. And all I could think was, it's over. He was like my dad, he was a mentor, he was a leader for our people and our movement. And all I could say to myself was, it's over. And then I came back here and the sun went down and the people gathered here where you are standing tonight. Mm -hmm. Hundreds, then thousands, then tens of thousands. And we marched in silence to City Hall and filled the plaza with our light. And then I knew it wasn't over. It was just beginning. Yeah. Yes. How many times in your life have you thought it was over? I thought it was over when I was 15 and getting ready to kill myself. And then I learned about gay liberation and I got the fuck out of Phoenix and came to San Francisco. Yeah. 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 I thought it was over in 1985 when all of my friends were dying. Every one of these buildings, as far as you can see all around here, people were dying and there was no sign of it. And we built a quilt and we marched and we acted up and we fought back. Yeah. We, many of us didn't think we'd live to see the day of treatment and the ability to prevent it. We thought it was all over. It wasn't over. We kept marching, we kept fighting. The day after the election, I woke up and I thought it's over. Everything I fought for, everything you've believed in and dreamed of, everything we imagined possible, swept away in one day, one vote. It isn't over. But you are going to have to be stronger and smarter and work harder than you ever imagined. And if your capacity for empathy is restricted by your skin color, your heritage, your gender, or your generation, then we are doomed. This is the end of division among us. We on the left, we who say we are progressives, we who stand for justice and equality and to save the planet, we cannot be divided. No more. You must stand together. We will build a wall. We will build a wall of resistance built on a determination to see what Harvey Milk dreamed of come true. I am 62. I do not expect to live long enough to see the damage of that election undone Sorry. in my lifetime. And you who are young will have to fight this your whole life. But it isn't over. We're not done. And if we can just stick together, I believe we can prevail. Of course. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much.